If you have ever experienced Glitch in the Matrix, or have any other true scary story you want to share, just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. So, gosh, where to start? Well, I can pinpoint the moment that this happened. I was driving to my girlfriend's house. There's one part of the road where it's a dual carriageway, except this one is odd. In the UK, we drive on the left, but the turn I have to take has a slip road on the right, which takes you to a junction where you wait for a break in the traffic, and then drive across the other carriageway. So, I'm at the front of the queue waiting for the gap. It's rush hour, so there is a long line behind me. Although I am an experienced driver, I'm keenly aware that people behind want to get home, so I'm ready to go. Seeing a gap that I think I can fit through, I gun it. Time seems to slow down. I think I hear a horn and bang and clearly smell hot antifreeze. Everything goes black for, like, maybe a second or two. I shiver as I open my eyes, exactly like the feeling you get when someone walks on your grave, only to find myself on just the other side of the junction, driving on the road that I should be on, as if nothing has happened. I pull over and check that everything is in one piece, and it is. I take a minute or two to just calm down. I jump back in the car and then continue on my way. As I approach the garage where I normally would fill up with petrol, I look down to check my fuel. I drive a Fiat 500 and as long as I have owned it, five years at this point, at least in my universe, the fuel gauge is next to the tachometer on the left. It's the TFT version. I should explain that the fuel gauge and temperature gauge are displayed on the panel on either side of the digital speedometer. Fuel on the left, temp on the right. But essentially they look the same. In this universe, they're swapped over. Fuel on the right and temp on the left. Anyway, I've checked this since as initially I thought it might have been a software update or something, but all the pics that I can find of it online are the way that it currently is. Fuel right, temp left. It's not important, just the first change that I noticed. I get to my girlfriend's house, and my tattoo-hating girlfriend, like, when we got together, the first thing she told me was that if I was to get a tattoo, she would leave me. This version of her has a tattoo on her wrist. It's a small dog, in honor of our dog that we lost. Other things have changed, too. Her demeanor is different. Ironically, I prefer this version. She's much more easygoing and approachable. And she also dresses differently. Only little things, but it's different. The sort of thing that only a boyfriend would notice. For example, my version loved mid and long skirts. This version won't wear a skirt that comes below her knees. It's not like I don't know her. We've now been together 16 years, and at this point we had been together about 14 years. There are a bunch of other changes too. Stupid things that are no longer where they have always been kept. She always had a house phone in the hallway. It's now in the living room. I could not find a watch and some cufflinks that I knew that I had, she even helped me look for them and had me describe them. So, I told her it's the set that we bought together in Jewelers three years ago. I even named the specific Jeweler, only to be told that I was silly because we decided not to buy them. Anyway, now is the real kicker. After whatever happened to me, and I still don't fully understand it, happened about two years ago. Now when I think back, I can remember both buying and not buying the cufflinks. It's like I remember both versions. I can also remember taking my girlfriend to the tattooist to get the tattoo. I have a clear memory of it. But 
Then I have memories after that where the tattoo is missing from her wrist. And believe me, I would remember. It's all just a bit muddled. My biggest concern now is going back. I am so much happier in this version of seemingly improved reality. So, this happened when I was 16. I'm 18 now. I was on a hiking trip with my dad in mid-April. Skipping the fine details about the hike, we had planned on Marcy but opted for Wright Peak due to unanticipated snow. We stayed at the Adirondack Loy, that's L-O-J, 1002 Adirondack Loy Road, Lake Placid, New York, 12946. Occasionally driving up to the town on Lake Placid for food and some gear that we needed. After the pretty grueling but incredible nine hour hike and a good little rest, we decided that we had earned a steak dinner and went to Upstairs Grill at 2490 Main Street, Lake Placid, New York, 12946. An okay spot, but we were so starving that we'd eat each other if we weren't careful. For some environmental context, it is cold as hell. 10 to 20 degrees cold. 10 to 11 p.m. There were impenetrable clouds blocking 100% of the natural light. A good foot of snow on the ground, and a few inches caking the thick pine trees surrounding us from all sides, pretty much everywhere. These factors combined with the utter lack of a critical light made for a complete blackout. I mean that it was uncanny. I've never seen darkness so unimaginably, incomprehensibly dark. We did this thing a few times where we would shut off the truck's engine, windows up, and then turn off our headlights. The second you did, you would get an almost overwhelming, vulnerable fight-or-flight response. The same response you'd get when you hear something loud in your empty house, plus the feeling of falling back in your chair. The only word for it was dread. Note, I'm not afraid of the dark, and my dad's a former marine and active city cop. Half of his job is scrapping limbs off the ground from car crashes, and here he was, afraid of the dark. We'd, for a few seconds, just look in awe at the sheer void outside of the windows slash windshield before switching the headlights back on, out of panic, disguised as nervous giggles. Note that I'm not claiming this and what happened later was the work of some supernatural dark force or anything, just another eerie, unrelated thing that happened. As you can imagine, between the icy and snowy roads, the winding forest roads, and the way that you couldn't see 30 feet ahead with LED high beams, we were driving very slow. After the well-deserved dinner, we drove back to the lodge. We didn't use a GPS since it's literally like three turns, and we'd been back and forth five times. We were driving a little while, no more than ten minutes. Notes, while we were driving hella slow on the mountain roads, the town was well lit and the streets were well maintained. So, we were out of there in no time, before I stopped the conversation. Yo, did we miss our turn? I think we should have gotten there by now. I don't think so. He pulled over so I could check my phone where we were. We were ten miles from where we were supposed to turn. A half hour car ride at the crawl that we were doing. We made it all the way up to Keene before realizing it. He checked his GPS and it was correct. Granted, we were in pretty deep conversation. Missing the turn by a few minutes made sense. But, again, we were over 30 minutes from the turn. This just didn't make sense for the both of us. He was exhausted and had a few beers, but I was 100% lucid and alert. We just couldn't make sense of it or stop talking about it. How are we here? We should not be here. We can't be here. As you can imagine, the ride back was way longer. Ten times that of the way there. 
obviously we were more attentive about our surroundings. We passed buildings, bridges, and landmarks that we both had zero recollection of. Over and over, we were turning it in our minds. Nothing odd ever happened since, and we went home the next day as planned. Well, except for this dear cryptid thing we both briefly saw way after in a different state, but wrong sub for that. You could say the combination between being spent in conversation, the darkness, and everything looking the same made us zone out or something, but I don't think so. The sheer difference in time that we both felt was simply too great to chalk it up to that. I know that it's not as bonkers as I fondled my time-traveling doppelganger in a Red Lobster parking lot during Lobster Fest, but this is the only place that I could share. P.S. Our clocks seemed accurate to everything else, and that time, according to our tech, had passed. So, me and my mother were watching this BBC Cycling Olympic live event program on the TV in the late evening. We were laughing and joking about how silly some of the things looked, and making our usual jokes of making up absurd situations. Like Boris going past on his Boris bicycle saying, Hello, Chapos, before crashing. We watched and joked about the sporting event until the end, where we watched to see if Britain would win, and when we saw the final results, and as it was late at night, we turned off the TV to head to bed. The next morning, we saw the same event again on TV. Now, I said something like, oh, I guess they're doing a non-live replay from last night for all the people who missed it, and we didn't think much of it. But then the presenter started doing a live interview. And I must stress, it was live, and marked as such on the TV screen. Okay, so we said to ourselves, maybe it's just ongoing from last night, obviously there are a lot of events to get through, and we were about to turn it off when we saw the cycling. Weird, maybe it was something like the semifinals. Didn't they have that last night? As we both watched, we saw the exact same events including all of the near misses, and all of the points that we had made fun of and drew attention to with our jokes, pan out in real time. My mother was shocked. Didn't we just watch this last night? To which I bluntly replied, yes, yes we did. She looked at me and I looked at her, and there was this realization that we had both already seen this entire live event beforehand. And when we checked the TV planner, this was the only one. This was live. Happening now. Somehow we had both seen a preview copy of the live events on TV before it had happened. In true absurdist fashion, she replied, if only we had placed a bet. To which I retorted, there was no way that we could have known this was going to happen in the future to have placed a bet. I'm really not sure what happened, but these are the only theories I have. One, we saw the true live event the night prior and the TV company are just lying about the next morning events being live, i.e. fake live, but then where did all the prior events data go? Two, we somehow both had a precognitive vision of the future, but it's unclear how it would be shared or why it would need a TV. Three, we somehow both changed timelines to one where the cycling event was somehow delayed by a day. But then, how did the cyclist make all the exact same movements we saw before if they were in a delayed timeline? Or four, the system, or the farm as I like to call it, bugged out and accidentally showed us an early preview that we weren't meant to see, as it was loading up for the next day's events. Whatever it was, we both saw it happen. Hey, 
I love your glitch stories. I actually fall asleep to them most nights, and have been having strange dreams as a result. I love it. Anyhow, I had a glitch happen to me when I was around 8 years old. I remember laying in bed and not being able to sleep, since it was the end of summer vacation, and I now had to go to bed and wake up early for school. I'm sure that the night before the first day of school was a bummer for most kids. I tried everything from counting backwards to thinking of clouds, but nothing worked. My mind wandered, and I remembered something my dad told me about how film strips work. I'm at an age where, when I was young, we would rent a film strip projector from the library and play cartoons on the wall for special occasions. It seems silly now, but it was magical at the time. He said that film strips are really just a series of still images that flash by so fast that they appear to have motion. Kind of like when you flip through a stack of paper with sequential drawings and they suddenly animate. It was then that I had the strange idea to start blinking my eyes and looking around. It gave a real-life, sort of, film projector type effect. There was just a little night light in my room, and I could see a bit of light from the street lamp outside of my bedroom curtains, but that was all. Almost instantly, the light outside began to grow in intensity, getting brighter and brighter. It freaked me out, but I kept blinking for some reason, even though I had pink eye at the time and it was a bit sore to do so. Soon, my entire window was glowing as I waited for the street lamp bulb to explode or something. Now my whole room was lit up, and the only thing that stopped my blinking was a knock on my bedroom door. It was my mom telling me to get up and get ready for school. I was so confused. As I walked out of my room and saw the time on our kitchen's old-school analog clock, the arms pointed to it being 8am. But I was just blinking for like 30 seconds. How did it go from 9pm to 8am literally in a few blinks of an eye? My dad thinks that I just fell asleep blinking, but that would mean that I would have no memories of dreaming and then I'd have to have been blinking still as I woke up. Sure, that's possible, but seems unlikely. Especially since having pink eye meant that a full night's sleep would have fused my eyelids together. Remember that wonderful feeling? Yikes. Anyhow, if anyone has any theories on what happened, I would love to hear it. Otherwise, I'm just going with the glitch in the Matrix theory. Hi, Raven. I just want to start by saying that I'm a huge fan of yours, and that I love listening to your stories. I've been listening for about a year now, and besides the usual sounds and bumps in the night, I just can't explain what happened a few years back. My fiancé and I have been noticing weird things happening that we just can't explain. The story being the weirdest. My fiancé has her own t-shirt business on the side of her regular 9-to-5 job, so she's usually quite busy. A few weeks ago, her grandmother requested a long-sleeve navy blue shirt that she wanted customized. My fiancé could not find the shirt in her grandma's size at the usual craft stores that she purchases from, so she had to search elsewhere, specifically a popular arts and craft store here called Michael's. She ordered the shirt for pickup because there were only two left in store. Here's where things get weird. The day that this happened, we were at home laying on separate couches, and my fiancé had just sent me a Glitch in the Matrix video. I watched it, and proceeded to get up and lay on the same couch as her. All of a sudden, she gets a text message from Michael saying, Your order was picked up, thank you for shopping with us. She shows me and goes, What the hell? She immediately calls them, and the lady on the phone tells her that it was picked up, and that she is the one that did the transaction. My fiancé and I are very confused at this point. She told us that the lady who picked it up 
had the confirmation email and the barcode that had to be scanned, all on her phone. Once again, we sit there in confusion. I was the only other person besides my fiancé that even knew about the order. My fiancé asked to speak to the manager, and he says that someone indeed just picked it up and stated that they were my fiancé, and had all the information in their email to prove it as well. He said he would still give us the last shirt and check the cameras, but that the employee was not lying. We left immediately, and headed there to get the shirt and to face whatever or whoever it was on the camera. The entire time, my fiancé just keeps saying that it's impossible, and that nobody could have had that information, and how did they get it? She said that even if someone hacked my email, what are the possibilities that it's someone in the same state? We are a black lesbian couple, and my fiancé is more on the masculine side with short hair. We arrive and head to the counter where the lady we spoke with on the phone greeted us. My fiancé stated who she was, and the lady immediately said yes, and looked a little confused and said that the lady that picked up the shirt was black, about the same height and build, but that she didn't remember her facial details too much. She handed us the last shirt and told us to check out some of the really good deals that were going on. We asked to see the camera footage, but the manager explained that it would have to be turned over to the police for a theft, and then from there the police could release it to us. We walked around the store for a bit, looking at each other and trying to figure out this mystery woman. I said, what if it's a glitch? What if you have a doppelganger? Like, maybe a you from a different dimension crossed over into our world? She looked at me and freaked out and said, The shirt was eight dollars, babe. I just don't understand it. It's weird. We left and decided that we may never know who picked up the shirt that day, or how they looked similar to my fiancé and had her email information, or why they even wanted the eight dollars shirt in the first place. We have since let it go, but I can't help but wonder who picked up the shirt that day. And why? Hi, Raven. I'm a big fan of your channel. I've been listening to your channel every night during work, and I never thought I would submit my own story until I recently started listening to this old band again for the first time since I've had this discussion with this friend years ago that had re-sparked this old memory. I tried to submit it to the Glitch in the Matrix subreddit, but it got rejected because they thought I was telling a childhood story, but I'm convinced that this is a glitch, or sign, of some kind. I have no idea why this memory was lost for a while, but it just recently came back to me when I was listening to this band again, when I had completely forgot about this song's existence. When I was around seven or eight years old, I wrote a riff on a keyboard that I had heard in my dreams. I was recently talking to a friend of mine who has the same taste of music as me, and we were talking about bands that we grew up with, primarily being emo and screamo type music. But we got to talking and he said, Oh, well, one of my favorite songs of all time is Blessed with a Curse by Bring Me the Horizon. I replied with, Oh, I haven't heard it. Do you have it on your phone by chance so I can listen to it? When he played the song, the first riff, I kid you not, was the riff to the Bring Me the Horizon song, and I didn't really grow up with emo music like he had. I grew up mainly in 90s dance and house, like Daft Punk. I didn't get into emo music until my teen years. Anyway, when he played that song... I just sat there in disbelief. I always heard that song in my dreams, but I heard a piano melody version of it. I would literally hear this song multiple times throughout my childhood, and it always gave me chills, but had a really familiar sense of nostalgia for some reason, but I never knew why. What's the meaning behind this? Is this a sign of some kind? 
Normally when I see stories like this, I kind of shrug them off, but after it happened to me, I'm convinced that something is wrong here. If you do get the chance to read this, thank you for sharing our stories, and thank you for submitting it to me. My glitch story started around early May of 2023. I had two pairs of glasses, both of a strong prescription. I have two others, one was prescription sunglasses and the other prescription safety glasses, and I'll bring those up later. Of the main two, one was older than the other, and I was wearing my newer pair at the time. I went to bed late one night and I thought that I put them on my nightstand. When I got up in the afternoon, yes, I work night shifts, the newer pair was not there. I searched my room to no avail. I could not find them anywhere in my house. I wondered where my dumb butt put them, but no matter, I still had the older pair. So, I wore them for a while. Now, please understand that my prescription is very strong. I wear them almost all the time. The only time that I take them off is when I watch things on my tablet or my smartphone. Now, early July, I was sitting on my front deck watching YouTube and having a glass of wine. Only one in case anybody gets any ideas. My older glasses were by my chair. When I went inside my house, I brought my glasses with me. I put them on my kitchen countertop. I used the washroom, but when I came back, the glasses were gone. What the hell? I searched and searched everywhere for them including between the wooden boards on my front deck, but the gaps are not wide enough for them to have fallen through. By this point, I'm flabbergasted. How in the hell did I manage to misplace two pairs of glasses? I only had my prescription sunglasses and prescription safety glasses. I'm a healthcare worker, so the safety glasses were handy during the pandemic. Needless to say, Wearing sunglasses during the night shift was not ideal. I had to take them off while using the computer, otherwise I could not read the computer. My safety glasses were no longer necessary as the pandemic ended, plus they made me sweat. I ended up having to buy another pair. Because of my prescription, they were not cheap. And yes, I have insurance, but once you max out the coverage, they won't pay for another pair until two years are up. It is now mid-October, and I still have not found those two pairs. Losing the older pair is especially disconcerting. Maybe I'm early dementia, I am in my 50s, or I just have some timer's disease. Haha, <laughs> healthcare humor. Either way, those glasses have now gone in the same black hole in my house where my nail clippers go. But at least I got those back. Normal evening at my house. Nothing unusual about the day leading to this. I was getting ready to take an early evening shower. My bathroom is pretty small, with no hidden places or cubbies that anything can fall into or whatever. Okay, so that is the stage set. I grabbed a plain grey towel that I had hanging on a clothing rack in my bedroom. And my wife teased me a little bit about using the same towel I had used the night before. I just look at her like, whatever, and continue on. I walk into the bathroom, hang the towel on the towel rod directly across from the tub, turn around to turn on the shower and get the temp set right. My wife says again that I'm using the same towel and that it seems weird to her, so in my head... I'm going to take the towel back in for her to sniff to see that the towel is not gross. I turn back from the tub to see a completely empty towel rod. No towel, gray or otherwise. No towel on the floor beneath the towel rod. I stood and just stared at the empty space for a few moments, 
and then I call in my wife to verify that there is no longer a towel. She stares in silence, then walks back into the bedroom where the clothing rack that I had first grabbed said plain grey towel from is still, in fact, empty. My wife and I both started feeling very strange and almost nervous, like a very mild panic feeling. My wife then proceeded to turn our entire apartment, not a very big space honestly, upside down. Nowhere in our entire space is there any evidence of a plain grey towel. We do have another partially grey towel, but it has large black and white stripes across it, so there's no chance that I just confused a striped towel for a plain grey towel. I would have had to have been confusing it for at least a year. This grey towel was already starting to fray at the seams. It was worn in and comfy. I liked that towel. I tried to add a picture of our bathroom, and maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I can't add it to the post for some reason. It was just to show how tight the space is, to see that there really was nowhere for the towel to fall into or behind, or anything. But yeah, the vanishing towel breaks my brain. My wife and I decided just to write it off as a glitch, except the fact that we are in a simulation and move on with life. Hi Raven, I only found out about you around a month ago and I've been binging all of your videos. They're great to listen to while playing video games, so I've been told. This is my first glitch and it wasn't nearly as scary as I thought it would be more curious than anything. I live in a little condo with my mom and my cat Roxy. Every day, someone has to take out the garbage by going to a big dumpster that sits in one of the parking lots. It was my mom's turn, so it was just me and Roxy in the house. I'm being thorough with the description of the upstairs because I want to emphasize how truly tiny the hallway is and how there's nowhere else to go or hide. I helped my mom gather the garbage bags and then went upstairs. Standing at the end where you come up, left side is the bathroom, right side is a closet. Then my mom's room and my room is at the other end. It is a very small hallway. Like walking from my room to the stairs is only about six steps. And if I stand in a certain way, I can have one foot in my room and the other in my mom's. My cat was downstairs. I know that she was because she was eating her treats when I went up. My mom always has to give her treats when she leaves or she'll cry. I was standing right by my open door at my dresser putting away and organizing my jewelry when I hear Roxy start crying, indicating that she was done with her treats and she realized mom was gone. I turn to go to the stairs and I try calling her up when I feel something on my leg. I turned to see Roxy smacking me trying to get my attention. I know that she was downstairs because I saw her there. We only have one staircase. You literally cannot get upstairs any other way, and the door was wide open. She did not come up those stairs. Just a point of note, I don't usually do this, but I would like to mention that cats operate outside of the Matrix. This is an established uh, fact at this point in time, just so everyone's aware. So that, my friends, was a collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. This week's collection of Glitch in the Matrix weirdness is what I'm trying to say. Had to get the the lead out on that one, just let my, my, my words do whatever they wanted to do there, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So, that was this week's Glitch in the Matrix collection. Feels like it's been forever, even though it's only been two weeks since last week we had a compilation that it seems a lot of you enjoyed, which is good. They were older Glitch stories, but you know they're always good, right? So, my compilations are obviously a few months behind, as the compilation for that one was May and June, but I do that on purpose. That way you don't hear the stories this week 
and then two weeks from now hear a compilation with the exact same ones. Yeah. I would rather keep them a few months behind. That way they kind of feel like they're new after a while, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm right. Who knows? Least of all me. I don't have the slightest clue if I'm right or not. Doesn't really matter. Hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. Always a fun time, in my opinion. Always a bizarre time, in my opinion, as well. You may still be able to hear it in my voice. My sinuses are still playing tricks on me. Voice is a little uh e if that's a, an, an adjective. Is uh an adjective? I don't think it is. We're going to pretend it is. Don't try to spell that, please. It's not the word of the week, I promise. <laughs> Anyways. Um, if you did enjoy the stories, please do hit that thumbs up button. That helps a lot. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, please do consider subscribing, as that does also help a lot. You can also join Patreon memberships where you get early access to content like this and other content as soon as it gets uploaded, and so forth and so on. There's also the super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel. It's appreciated, but never ever expected. And, as always, if you have a story to send my way, go to asthravendreams.com and click the button to do so. And I guess I should probably mention that on Friday nights, we now live stream over here on YouTube. So if you, uh aren't doing anything on Friday night, come by and say hi. Uh, I don't know what we're doing this week, Patience and I, but I know we're going to be streaming on Halloween. Uh, we're going to play... Blah, blah, blah. We're going to probably play some Don't Starve Together. Fun game. Good old spooky game. Good old creepiness. Maybe some Dead by Daylight, depending on how we feel. Maybe do some live recordings, just chatting. I plan to stream for several hours. So... If you have some downtime on Halloween, odds are you will see me streaming. That is, unless you don't get on YouTube during the downtime. Then you won't see me streaming. Not relevant. Uh, the other thing you can do is participate in what we call the Word of the Week. In the Word of the Week, I give you a word. And then for that week, you have a chance to enter a comment into the comment section with said word. Then the next week, I put you up on the screen. Unless there's a comp, in which case you get two weeks. And then I do it the next video I do. Like, this time. Two weeks ago, the word of the week was ceramic. Now, on the screen now, and several moments prior to now, uh, is screenshots... I cannot talk. Of all the people who left me comments with the word ceramic. Every single one of these people went above and beyond. Uh, did things they were not required or expected to do. And they did it anyways. They assisted and pushing this video harder into the algorithm by placing the word ceramic in a sentence. I'm extending this to keep them on the screen longer, because that's how I do things. Thank you to each and every single one of these people. I really do appreciate it. Y'all are amazing. Don't forget it. This week. The word of the week is one that I think I struggled with a few weeks ago. Last week. I don't remember when it was. But I wrote it down and was like, this is the next one. We're gonna, we're gonna, sk I'm gonna skip in the line, because this is my word. Um... And this, uh, this week, the word of the week is juncture, J-U-N-C-T-U-R-E, which is a point of time, especially one made critical by concurrence or circumstance. It's also a joint or connection, the manner of transition or mode of relationship between two consecutive sounds in speech, or the instance of joining or junction. Now, juncture is a fun word, and that's my sentence. Anyways, friends, I hope you all have a beautiful day. Hope you have a beautiful rest of your week. And hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. And until I see you again, my friends, much love and sleep well.